Are we hearing everything fine? Hello. Okay. All right, we're going to try to do this again. We've had some kind of a technical glitch. Most likely something caused by uh, Google getting ready to switch over to Google Live and stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and try this again. Guys, welcome to the Prestige. Make sure you hit subscribe and uh, look at Patreon for donations and stuff because we uh, clearly need them. Uh, Joe for America, veteran that mentions God on flag ceremony gets assaulted in the movie. Um, this jumped out at me almost immediately as soon as I saw it. I knew I was going to flag this one for a number of reasons. Uh, for one thing, remember when it used to be that um, the quote-unquote liberal way of looking at things meant to include more. That's how we uh, ended up with uh, the entire Sufism why people such as myself used to consider themselves liberal. But now, that's not really the case. Because today, it means the exact opposite. If you don't agree with what the particular liberal speaker is saying, then you don't have a right to speak or be heard at all. It says a veteran began offering traditional remarks at a military flag folding ceremony when his fellow uniformed airmen assaulted and dragged him out of the room because his remarks mentioned God. For decades, service members have included God while giving the flag folding speech at military and civic events, explaining the colors, symbols, and history of the flag. In other words, if you've always heard that the left is arguing there's no reference to God in the history of the country, which is total BS. So when it, something comes up that does, in fact, mention that history and shows you where that history is, well, then we just won't fucking talk about it. It's the liberal way. The speech has always closed with God bless our flag, God bless our troops, and God bless America. The Obama administration, thank you, President Obama, has removed all references to God in 2005. When Senior Master Sergeant Oscar Rodriguez proceeded to use the traditional ceremony at the request of the veterans the ceremony was for, he was assaulted and removed from the, the, the uh, ceremony. So let me ask you something, Ben. What is it that makes it such a great mystery that so many people are supporting Donald Trump when a lot of the support that Trump is getting is for common sense things, such as wanting to go ahead and bring freedom back in terms of if you don't want to sit through a flag ceremony that references God, then you don't have to. But otherwise, if he's requested by the person who the ceremony was for, to shut it down if it was for Mohammed and I bet you they didn't do it. And I think I'm saying openly that that's a lot of what you're going to find is drawing people to Trump. Uh, this class is brought to you by the Seacrest Motel. That amazing room that you're looking at there, Seacrest Motel is what you're going to be enjoying when you go to Cedar Point and you don't want to spend the fortune of the Vegas. You don't want to spend the fortune of the Holiday Inn either. Where do you want to go? You want to go to the Seacrest and I'll let them know you heard about it. Let's let you and you're going to get even more of a discount. We've got three wins in a row. Now, I'm not going to make light of the fact that somebody got shot here, but the person who got shot here was the person that pretty much had it coming. So we have three wins in a row. Uh, this is thanks Second Amendment. ECW holder drops gunman robbing a family dollar store. This is Crowder. Uh, Crowder is probably my favorite writer and journalist right now. Um, a close second would be uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. And again, I'm talking about the, the newer crowd that's come up. But uh, Crowder is probably the, my favorite, and you'll see why as this goes on. I'm going to cover his story in depth here. If someone is stupid enough to plan to try and to make bank, then it probably shouldn't be too surprising when said criminals choose a dollar store for robbing. Think about it, friends. It's a dollar store. How much are they going to have in it? Even if it's not one of the really cool everything dollar store, how much are they going to have in it? Since criminals making smart decisions isn't really a thing, 
this robber illustrated that perfectly when he decided to try his luck at the local Camry Dollar. When he started threatening people at gunpoint, he got surprised. The man attempted to rob the Camry Dollar in Cleveland, police say. The bystander with the PCW permit told him to drop the weapon, but he wouldn't, and he was shot in the head. The man with the CCW permit and the accused robber shot at each other, but only the suspect was injured because he was taken to Metro Health Medical Center and his condition is unknown. The man, was, the man who shot the suspect was not an employee of the store. Ah, the beauty of a concealed carry, Stephen Crowder wrote, helping regular people not die everywhere. Since now, stories like this, and there's many links, are popping up over and over again. That's because guns tend to be super duper effective when it comes to self defense. I love the uh, animated gif you have here with the guy who's enjoying a cup of science. Uh, <laughs> I love that. You know the worst part of this? There's going to be some sod out there who insists that DC holders shouldn't have, shouldn't have done that, uh, such as the link here. He says uh, the sh CCW shooter holds an armed robber in an SJW uniform. Then he should have called the police instead and waited to be saved. Firstly, shut up. Secondly, when you threaten someone's safety unprovoked, you forfeit your right to live. Not sorry, good luck with the brain damage. See, that is what gun control lobbyists don't get. People have the right to protect themselves. Sometimes, that looks like a roundhouse kick to the face. Other times, the criminal ends up chopping lead. That's what happens when you wave your gun in someone's face and start making demands of them. That's what comes down to the innocent victim versus the criminal. It's nice to see the victim walk away. Get to walk away this time unscathed. CCWs help to tip the scale in favor of the innocent. In this case, the innocent, meaning the guy who just wanted to buy a soda without having a gun pointed at him. Absolutely, friends, common sense in action. Which is why I've been saying for so long that we really need to get away from this this ridiculous notion that guns are responsible for everything that's horrible. Do you realize when you factor out gang violence and when you factor out um, violence that has to do with uh, a lot of inner city fighting, if you factor that out, there is almost no gun violence compared to what there has been in generations in the past. I don't think a lot of people understand that. Most of the problems that exist today that are still today have to do with uh, gangs and that such. Why are we playing the happy, happy, joy, joy song? Because I am proven right once again, that's why. And that always makes me very happy. No, all jokes aside, um, because people said that this wasn't going to work. And it did work. Um, people said that you weren't going to be able to get healthy fast food out of a place like McDonald's. Well, I wouldn't say we've actually gone into healthy mill here, but we have made massive strides natural society. McDonald makes positive changes to its demand for healthy food. Um, it says McDonald's is still not a healthy place to eat, and that's a given. But we're moving slowly in that direction, and I've said forever, the, the easy McFix, as I call it. It's so easy. It, it's mind-blowing to some people. McDonald's just needs to go ahead and have the regular Big Mac the way that it has always been. All their other sandwiches, however they've always made them, at whatever price they've always been at. By always, I mean, you know, within that dollar or so, $3 ballpark. Now, they need to come out with the organic burger that you can call whatever you want. Hopefully not the McGant type. See them doing something stupid. It's gigantic. It's organic. The McGantic. The McStupid. But I guarantee they could come up with something like that. You know what? That burger might be four or five dollars. And if you went through the drive through you would decide which burger you want. It's really, really not that hard. So they, they do, they should, they get a little bit of a dumpy for making this much harder than it needs to be because I just gave them the entire plan that was worth another minute. I'm Nick Smart. Okay, I'm done with them. I'm not going to do any more, I promise. McDonald's has been in the news a lot this month, thanks to big changes that the fast food company is making to several of its menu options. 
the company began making these changes more than a year ago when everyone said that Donald didn't do it and that I shouldn't be the chief harper on them, when it replaced margarine with real butter in its egg McMuffin and added kale and spinach to the iceberg lettuce in the salad, although it should be noted that the salads wound up being higher in calories than the Big Mac. Okay, there has to be something about salt or something. In March of 2015, McDonald's said that it would only source chicken raised without antibiotics that are important to human health. The company said it expected it would take until 2017 to accomplish the goal, but the switch of purchasers are unexpected. It also said that it would transition to using only cage-free eggs and that it would take up to a decade. Let's, a lot of that's probably just natural. Let's take a look at some of the other things coming to your local McDonald's. No more high fructose corn syrup in sandwich buns. It is being done away with. They will be replaced with real sugar. High fructose corn syrup has been linked to obesity, type 2 diabetes, and wreak havoc on the body's metabolism. Um, plus more health problems to list a few. Heart failure, that, that would be a nice problem. Yeah, I just took that like, little bit of a glitch. Reduced lifespan and infertility, and it leads to overeating. That makes you hungrier. In 2014, Chick-fil-A announced that it was removing high fructose corn syrup from its buns. Taco Bell announced in 2015 that it would remove the sweetener from its food. It goes on. Uh, artificial preservatives, see ya so long, they're ditching them, and it's with nuggets. Uh, remember the famous pink slime that was coming out. Um, they're getting rid of it in their pork, sausage patties, almond-style eggs, and scrambled eggs. Vika Harry, she's a McDonald's spokesperson, said the company got rid of the artificial preservatives in the cooking oil for the McNuggets, and its chicken nuggets now contain ingredients that sound more familiar to you. Yeah, like maybe real food, including pea starch and well, rice starch. So they are still using starch, but they're not as deadly. McNuggets will also be free of chicken skin, sun, sunflower oil, and citric acid. That citric acid is slightly different from vitamin C. It says uh, it's a common ingredient in Coca-Cola and other drinks. It's harmless in small amounts. However, large doses can eat away the stomach and esophagus and bladder. Sodium phosphate is going to be removed from the nuggets, but not the bread uh, and that, that That's going to have to be but it is making them a little bit less deadly than they have been. In 2014, researchers in Vienna suggested adding phosphates to the list of unhealthy ingredients to watch out on nutritional labels because they're linked to high blood pressure and things like that. Easy. The healthy version of the McNuggets supposedly tastes the same, and uh, they tested them out in Oregon and Washington, I guess. So um, some items still contain artificial preservatives. I, I get it. Uh, if, if the Coke, if the Coke has a uh, Coke or Pepsi, I think the Coke they have there, then obviously you're going to get high fructose corn syrup. This is why you'd have to stay up on Coke too, which is slowly moving away from the herd of white lady. Um, the sweet and tangy secret sauce that tops the McDonald's Big Mac though has 32 ingredients, including high fructose corn syrup. That's the company said it's removed from its buns. Fortunately, I never get that deep. It's the Thousand Islands dressing. They said it, the sauce is totally secret, but it contains five preservatives, including potassium sorbate and caramel color. So, friends, it, it, it's not exactly a health food or anything, but we are moving in the right direction, and uh, someone else who's moving in the right direction is Charles Barkley. Truth Revolt, the last of our three wins before we get into the W. Um, Charles Barkley is not that but we've got to be better as black people. The man is, the man is, uh, is speaking intelligently to it, and he's getting attacked for it. I think there, uh, there need, this sort of thing needs to be addressed. He's, uh, he's obviously a black man himself. He's not saying that black people are this or that. He's saying that there is a certain stereotype that is sometimes lived up to because the role models are pushing it. Like, you've got Dick Swiss Lake. You've got a number of people that would say that the Drake or uh, The Weeknd or whatever is promoting um, promiscuous sex 
uh, drug use, and um, dishonesty. If that is what's held up as someone that has made it, then it's, it is not ever described as fiction. Like, you take someone like Mount Slayer. I'm sure there's a number of people in the world that take Slayer seriously, particularly the Backyard Weekend Satanists. I get it. But by and large, people don't really take Slayer seriously. You don't really have blood dripping from your ceiling uh, when you play Slayer seriously. It's, no, it's called fiction. It's not a, it's not a lifestyle choice. I, it, it's a culture. It's never not a culture. I get it. But I mean, the the whole Satan side of it is not a, it's something most people take seriously. Um, the Judas Priest, the Redeemer of Souls, the Pain Killer, fictional stories about fictional creatures. Um, that's not really the case with this. A lot of what Barkley's talking about here is a willful decision to get mine at any cost, and you're not telling a story like Mario Puzo's Godfather. Rather, you're going ahead and making it something that you plan to do. That's what he's talking about here. After a recent interview with ESPN Basketball Hall of Famer Charles Barkley received heavy criticism for chiding those in the black community who blame everything on police brutality and never take responsibility for the problems they have. And again, I have a rally, a rail, I should say, on this show many times in this in time. I have mailed dump packs at police stations. I have called the cops out 150 million times for 150 million things. If you don't believe me, look at the rest of the postings on this site, this channel. But if they're just upholding basic law and order, that isn't a problem. And that's what he's talking about. This is from a July 12th interview. The cops have made some mistakes, but that doesn't give us the right to riot and shoot cops. We need the cops, especially in the black community. We as black people, we've got to do better. We never get mad when black people kill each other, which is what has always bothered me. I've always said that if we as a black people want more respect, we have to give each other respect. You can't demand respect from white people and the cops if you don't respect each other. You've got to, we've got to do better as black people. Now, would you mind telling me how anybody can possibly get mad at that? He's pretty much saying, how about we don't shoot each other? Could we do that? Could we address not shooting each other if our own lives matter, as our signs say? He went on to suggest a bit of self reflection for those loud voices complaining about racism everywhere. Are you part of the problem or are you part of the solution? Some were offended by his remarks, but he doubled down on them Tuesday. He said not backing down. As I've said before, and some people criticize me, I told them to kiss my ass because I can. We in the black community, we need the cops. Cops are important. They're very important, significant. We as black people got to do a better job of policing ourselves. Cops have made some mistakes. I think everybody has to admit that. But we just can't as black people every time something goes wrong say it's the cops' fault. We have done some damage to our own neighborhood, and we've got to do better in that aspect. Um, have they? Yeah, they have. You've got blacks burning down other people's businesses that are oftentimes um, rooted firmly in the black community, and they're not getting any respect because, you know what? Uh, the black people that are out there hustling and earning and living and uh, doing what the rest of us are doing have realized a long time ago we have one race, the human race, and we're all being flushed equally by the powers that lead us. It's only the people that are addicted to this notion of skin color that are somehow locked on us, and Barkley's doing a very good job of addressing it. He moves on. Uh, we need the cops. They're important. If it weren't for the cops, we'd be living in the wild, wild west. But it's not as simple as that. It's always the cops' fault. We as black people have made some mistakes, and we've got to make a better job policing ourselves. There's no right or wrong answer. That's the one thing about blacks. Black people only like it when you say that they want what you say. But I've been in that game for a long time, and it doesn't faze me. I'm a big boy, and I can handle the heat. Uh, very good for him, because if, if someone doesn't address the issue, if someone doesn't say, hey, we're doing this to ourselves, <laughs> then you 
can blame a lot of people. You can blame the white, the average white guy like me that has absolutely nothing against you. You can blame him, and that'll make you feel better. But that's not going to help you with the ultimate problem that you do have, which is a huge problem within your own community of people killing each other. Uh, what do uh, white communities have a problem with? Uh, white communities have a very big problem, in my opinion, with um, perceived stereotypes. And some of those stereotypes are rooted in like what you see on TV. So I think there are some uh, um, white people that are instinctively afraid of black people. Do I think that that's intelligent? No. Do I think that's racist? No. Uh, I think it's, it's more firmly rooted in um, lack of understanding what the real world is like. But having said that, when you walk down the street, you have no idea in this day and age. I mean, it's been this way my whole life. It did at least. Um, no matter what color they are, you don't know what their intentions are. You kind of look over your shoulder when they walk by. And if you don't, then you're not the one that lives in the city. And a lot of what I just told you about right there has nothing to do with race. Unless, of course, you feel better by getting shot by somebody of your own race. I personally don't want shot by anybody white, black, Asian, Korea, Korean, uh, Indian. You get the point. Guys, got the dumb music on because we got the dumb D of the day. No surprise, of course, it's brought to you by the exact opposite of Charles Barkley. Black Lives Matter. And again, there you see the sticker jump sticker chunk you little maybe heard about it from Rick Hughes. You get it at this time because you did. Multiple BLM gunmen shot at a car of a black woman at the Ferguson protest. This is August 11th. In other words, nothing says hate whitey like shooting a fellow member of your own community. <sighs> exactly what Barkley was talking about. More information has come out about the attempted murder of a driver who didn't see a BLM protester standing in the middle of a busy street in the middle of the night. So I guess her, her crime was that she was uh, she couldn't see. More inform so she deserved to die, of course. More information has come out about the attempted murder of a driver who didn't see a BLM protester standing in the middle of a busy street in the middle of the night. The driver, hit by a BLM retard, while other protesters attempted to block the car in while multiple peaceful protesters brandished guns and started shooting at the car, attempting to kill the driver who turned out to be a black woman. Two cars hit as multiple gunmen opened fire on unidentified protesters, hit several people. And so they shot, they shot one of their own protesters, and they shot a black woman who just didn't see the man in the street. Several people armed with guns are now believed to be to have fired multiple shots outside a protest on West Lawson Avenue last night. No one was injured in the gunfire, however, however, police now say two cars were hit by many of the bullets coming from different directions. Police are now following leads and contacting local hospitals in search of the man injured during the incident that sparked the violent ordeal. As the investigation is continuing, uh, the man hit by the car driven by an African American woman. It happened Tuesday night, just after dark, on the last one. Get the hell out of the road! Police say the protester ignored several warnings about blocking West Lawson by standing in the street. At one point, the man was standing in the middle of the busy street when he was hit by a car that was coming southbound on West Lawson. Now, see, I'm a skateboarder. Particularly more so um, when I was uh, younger. I'm more snowboarding now just because it's what I can get to more easily. But um, I've almost been mowed over in the street a number of times. And you know what? That would have been my fault for being in the damn street. Um, oh, God. Within seconds, police say that stunt fire coming from different directions and aimed at the female driver of the Chevy Impala. The driver was not hit, however, the car was struck numerous times. The driver was too afraid to stop and left the scene to contact police. Investigators now say the second car was caught in the blaze of gunfire when it was also hit by se several times. Police say two people were at a stoplight when their Nissan Altima was shot during the chaotic scene while one of the vehicle was injured. 
police still have no details about uh, what happened to the man hit by the car or his identity. Police talked to the African-American driver who was believed to have accidentally hit the man. She says she was distracted by protests. In other words, the idiots are standing on the side of the road saying, read my signs, support my cause, and uh, listen to my BS about how everybody hates black people, even though they don't. And when someone looks over and does what you want them to do and reads your stupid ass sign, you accidentally get one of your own people protesting and hit by the person reading the sign for the protest that the person getting hit has attended and intended for you to read. That is the dumbdy of the day, friend. The protesters on the side of the road distracted her from the lone dumb fuck standing in the middle of the road. That's exactly what the article said. LOL. It's clear at this point that Black Lives Matter is just a terrorist, anti-police, anarchist organization and has no pretenses of being peaceful. Um, police say all evidence supports the driver's account of not seeing the person in the street until it was too late. So the Black Lives Matter goons have even turned against their own leaders, threatening to kill him and his family unless he leaves town, all because he held a Black Lives Matter rally that got shot by a black thief, and the rally goers chased him down and held him until cops came. So they can't even invest, they can't even arrest criminals now within, within their own movement. That, that's where that's going. And that, friends, is why they get the dumb of the day. Thank you for listening, friends. Do me a favor to subscribe, to share. Please donate if you can to DirectViews at Hotmail.com. Check out my Patreon site as well if you can be interested. Good night, friends. God bless.